we will talk really quickly. <laughs> um, I'm going to try and talk about the last 20 years when I was last, uh, first diagnosed with RP. Um, in fact, it was actually this time around 20 years ago. So I wanted to share a poem which I wrote um, last year for another project which sort of highlights what it was like. I'm so happy, I'm so free, love to be independent and do as I please. Succeeding at college, we're turning 18, driving towards passing our tests with ease. Gazing at the twinkling stars at night and watching the colorful butterflies fluttering their wings. Seeing the beautiful sunset and sunrise each day and appreciating a lovely warm smile. Life was wonderful, life was superb, and I was gonna achieve great things in a while. After uni, I shall go to study my passion in business law. Although in an unfamiliar town, adventures I shall create. But there was just one thing. Why couldn't I see in the dark or in dim lighting? Maybe it was just stress and it would pass. I would just have to wait. Ouch, where did that lamppost come from? Ah, where did that bollard come from? I'm sure they keep moving just to hit me. Clumsy incidents I kept attracting. While risk, whilst reaching over, spinning my glass of drink that was just there in front of me, whilst picking up a dropped pen, but completely missing the corner of the table. Ouch, my forehead. Knocking, bumping, missing, and spinning, and missing steps. It was all getting too much. Why me? Why not anybody else? Anxious months of appointments with this doctor and that. Could somebody please just tell me, why am I being so clumsy? When can you fix me? Please, when can I totally see? You have RP, retinitis pigmentosa, a degenerative eye condition. There is no treatment or cure. Holding back my tears, struggling to keep up my pounding head, a lump in my throat, the words simply fading away. I couldn't hear no more. Mixed emotions of shock, confusion, fright filled my motionless and devastated non body. How has this happened to me? Why has this happened to me? My life has changed so quickly in a blink. Questions overloaded my mind. Will I ever be able to drive my dream car, a red Lamborghini? Will I still be able to go to uni? But what would my friends and family think? You will lose your vision eventually, one day, years down the line, months pass away, when you may notice deterioration in weeks. The horrifying words kept playing over and over and over again. I couldn't control my painful, angry tears from falling onto my cheeks. The world had gone dark. My eyes had failed me. My failing eyes had changed my life forever. So that was my diagnosis back in 1997. And that's pretty much how I felt for the next almost two years. I isolated myself. I guess I was depressed, confused, much of a big shock to not just me, but my whole family. And <coughs> we'd never even heard of RP. I couldn't even pronounce the word retinitis pigmentosa for a very long time. I've not even met any other blind person before. And I started losing friends because I started making excuses of why I couldn't go out or whilst they were busy doing normal 20 year old things of doing clubbing, drinking. I just said, oh, I've got homework or I've got this to do. Um, I was put in touch with my local rehab officer in Leicester where I grew up and eventually we got enrolled onto a college course where I studied um, and then shortly after where I passed I got into a job so I kept myself busy and at that point I was only affected with peripheral slight peripheral loss and night blindness so I could manage and get by work was great fast forwarding to 2002 I'd met my husband prior that and we got married um, he was very supportive, understanding. He did his own research about the condition. Some things which I didn't even know about, because I think <coughs> I lived in denial. I didn't want to know anything about it. I, I didn't even want to read up about it. I didn't want to know what it was going to mean. I think I was just scared and frightened of what it could mean for me. Uh, moving to London, so trying to come to terms with 
Getting used to a busy, fast-paced city from a small, calm and quiet Leicester was challenging in, in itself and also getting used to a new family, a new home, a new area whilst being a daughter-in-law as well. It wasn't easy. Um, fast forwarding to 2005, I gave birth to my oldest daughter and I'd noticed I couldn't do things as well, I couldn't see things as well, but I thought it was just stress and um, being exhausted from not having a good night's sleep for absolutely ages. Um, trying to get used to a newborn baby, um, but months down the line, I, when I had my checkup, it was confirmed that I'd lost a little bit of sight. Fast forwarding to 2008, I had my second daughter where it significantly decreased, where I wasn't able to be as independent and take her out to check up appointments or anything. Comparing the two girls um, with my second daughter, I wasn't then able to read books with her, I couldn't see letters from schools, I couldn't help her with her homework, um, help her with her alphabet or anything like that, which I did feel really upset, angry, I felt ashamed, I felt embarrassed, I felt let down as a mum that I couldn't do the basic things a mum should be able to do. Um, I kept them in the pushchair as long as I possibly could. I purposely built a big bulky pushchair with a massive thick handlebar at the front. So if I did bump into anything, the bar would get it first and not my child. <laughs> Love that pushchair. Um, <laughs> it didn't help when I did bump into school mums, um, the school day, <laughs> the other children. The comments I used to get, but I just had to bite my lip and just get on with things. Um, I don't think even at that point I was still ready to share why I be so clumsy. Um, eventually, when I did get them out the pushchair, take them to the park was not something I did as normal parents probably do take their children to the park. I was scared of losing them. I did have jingly rubber bands on their hair, which I used to tie up um, just so I could hear them. I did have to let go of their hands. Um, and those squeaky shoes that you used to get, oh, what a lifesaver. Um, but I didn't do that too often because I was fearful that I would lose them or they'll run away like little children can do. Um, but taking them to school, obviously the, as the more they grew up, they didn't want to hold my hand, they wanted to be independent and walk in front, that gave me the shivers. Um, not only was I scared about that, bump, the school run wasn't really easy. I'd miss a school day, I couldn't find my daughter's classrooms, um, following the sounds of familiar parents that I could relate to, sort of following their direction. I guess, and then I started losing contact with the other school mums as my sight decreased. I could hear them, but not see them. Um, my daughter would then say, oh, that was so-and-so's mum walking past. And it was quite upsetting to think that they wouldn't say hello or anything. Um, I guess I was appeared to be like a crazy, loony mum banging into things all the time, knocking children over possibly, um, having a conversation with someone and then walking away and then continuing and just looking as if I'm talking into thin air. <laughs> or I'd walk and suddenly see a shadow of myself or a hedge that's come out and thinking I'm just about to bump into something. So I'd suddenly shriek. And I guess that might not be a good look either. Um, eventually, as my sight was deteriorating, it was it was until I had quite a number of near hit, near near miss accidents. One particular incident was when I said it was enough was enough. I was crossing a side road and sort of veered off into the middle, onto the main road where a car had to slam their brakes. I had a few incidents like that, but this particular time I had my children with me and I thought I can't go on like this. The thing that I avoided for quite a long time was the white cane and I felt it was about time I think I needed to use one. I had cane training and got in touch with my local rehab officer who are part of your local sensory team and Dean Apps provided me with cane training which was a lifesaver as it, it, it as in a way. It helped me with school runs but then I had the added issue of Mom, why is she, what's that? Is that a metal detector? Is she going to find money? <laughs> I get comments like, what is that stick that you're using? Does it help you see? Um, I have moms barging their push chairs into me. So in, in, in a way, it helped me get to the school, but then a new set of problems that happened when I started entering the school gate. So like someone mentioned today, I did take it for myself to go into school to see if I could speak to children in the assembly and sort of educate them in in what a white cane was. 
I did get in touch with guide dogs and um, Elizabeth came with me to my daughter's local school and she did a presentation on guide dogs where I did it on white cane and it helped massively. Following on that, children would then come up to me and say, oh, hi, Shreya's mom, it's so-and-so. So they would actually tell me who they were. Per they must have gone home and told their parents and parents started coming up to me and saying hello to. And teachers were aware because then they would say, oh, it's Mrs. So-and-so to me. So that was <coughs> fast forwarding um, to 2013, I believe it was. I was at my local Moorfields I appointment where my husband spotted a poster being put up for a retinal day where I first went along because we saw the word RP fighting blindness and retinitis pigmentosum on it. And I thought, wow, um, no offence to anyone, but every time I went to an appointment at Moorfields, I was surrounded by people over 80. And I thought, surely I'm not the only young, well, I was young then, but surely I'm not the only young person with a eye condition. And to be honest, I've never met anyone else, uh, even though I, I went to Moorfields every year. Um, I went along and I heard RP fighting blindness were going to be talking. And it was in fact, uh, I was actually sitting behind them. Uh, so as soon as um, they finished their talk, I well, gave my details and registered with them. And the next working day or whenever it was, they contacted me, took my details, and I started receiving monthly bulletins and information about what the charity was doing. Um, I started going to more and more of the events that they uh, put on. And I started meeting more and more people with the same eye condition as me started relating to them, started talking to them, started sharing tips. The more I kept going, and I was grateful for the charity for existing, for even putting me in touch with other people, that I wanted to give something back. I then started volunteering for RP Fighting Blindness on their helpline. And it's a really great asset because I, don't, I didn't know of any other charity that did that. All people on the volunteering helpline are affected by RP, so they do know what they're talking about and they provide practical and emotional support and signpost you to relevant organisations. I then started volunteering a bit more for different other charities and I set up a social group in my local borough for people to actually meet face to face. Um, that group is still existing and it's like in March this year, it's two years since it was, not, since it was formed. Um, I then started arranging charity fundraisers or awareness days to promote what the charity did, what the charity does, and raise awareness of eye, the eye condition. As not a lot of people I found were aware, um, especially in the Asian community. Um, so the first event took place in 2014 where we had people affected by RP to talk about inspirational, um, their inspirational journeys of what they've achieved and other organisations went along to uh, share their advice on what they did. Um, last September we had I organised a dinner and dance with the support of RB Fighting Blindness and that was a dinner and dance with entertainers but the message was portrayed through a drama production where a cast of blind, partially sighted and sighted people shared what a typical journey could be like um, promoting the charity and its work but raising awareness of RP. Um, it hadn't been easy and I've sort of fast forwarded it in so many ways but up until then I did feel really isolated, really lost, um, couldn't really express how I was feeling, didn't know where to start from but it was then I realised that the help of um, RP Fighting Blindness, Sudu, Dean Apps who gave me that confidence gave me that motivation that life can continue with RP. You, it didn't have to let you down. There's so many things out there. And the trickiest part, I guess, was accessing that information because if you don't know what's out there, where do you start looking? So I guess connecting with different people, being part of different organisations really helped in keeping and helping me up to date with support services out there. I. I hadn't worked for a very long time, um, back in 2003, and I was absolutely thrilled when I got the job of an activities coordinator with East London Vision, who are part of the Thomas Barclay Trust, which meant I was supporting part blind and partially sighted people, getting out and about in the community, liaising with speakers <coughs> to provide information to them. So I'm really passionate about what I was doing. 
um, a few awards that came along the way. Um, I was awarded the Linda Cantor Future of the Charity Award back in 2015 by Arthur Fighting Blindness. Um, and the biggest and grateful and humblest award was last year where I was awarded, um, awarded the Points of Light Award at 10 Downing Street, which I still can't forget. Uh, it still plays on my mind and it was a really, really big day. Um, what I wanted to share was that I learnt along the way that you don't have to give up on what you wanted. I actually drove a Lamborghini in March this year, something I thought <laughs> I would never, never, ever do. Um, I mean, how? How could I do it? But there are blind organisations out there that help people with a vision impairment to drive cars. I don't know if they drive normal cars, they tend to do sports cars, but that's the fun bit. Um, so I did drive my Lamborghini. I got a job thinking that who would ever employ a blind person. I mean, I've never, up until then, I never even met a blind person who was working, so I was unaware of other, you know. And now that I am working, there are loads of amazing blind or partial sighted people in work these days. Um, and there's quite a num bit of support getting into employment as well. Um, I want to finish up on saying that don't let RP get, get you down. Um, don't let it control you, control it. Just achieve your dream. There's lots of support out there. And just talk, what I learned along the way is I didn't talk about my RP. I tried to hide it for as long as I possibly could because I was ashamed, I was embarrassed because I didn't know anyone else with it. And I've only started talking about it in the last couple of years and that is nearly 15, 16 years later. And I've created a Facebook page which I raise awareness of my life as such, um, typical issues that I face and I share them and then people respond like they've done the similar thing. So we, we talk about experiences, we share tips, we share um, support services out there that can help one another. And last September, I um, was nominated to become an ambassador for RP Fighting Blindness. So I intend to continue doing what I'm doing. And the first thing was I want to, to organize a series of workshops to empower, to build on confidence and promote independence to those affected by sight loss. So in March, we had, well, I organized an, um, a workshop to do with hair, makeup, and skin care for people with sight loss. Um, it was aimed for ladies and men, um, that topic that we, uh, the comment that was mentioned this morning, what support is there for husbands of it? My husband's in a similar situation. So the general idea was that the men will go to the pub while the <laughs> women get <laughs> To my surprise, the men wanted to be involved in the workshop, so that would never happen. It was just my husband on its own. So the next workshop, I'll promote them, I'll make sure we get men, um, husbands, carers, partners uh, involved. So you have that support, a bit of connection, and you know, just a chance for them to talk as well, because I find there isn't much out there for partners. Um, so I'd like to end on today is please talk, please connect and share how you're feeling because I think the only way you can move forward is sort of accepting it. I know it takes a long time, it took me nearly 15, 16 years, but eventually you will get there and that's when you can start you know, living your life again. Thank you.